Welcome back on the channel guys, today's episode is a little bit different and the idea for this video came from one of my subscribers who suggested me this topic two weeks ago underneath the Laney giveaway video in the comments section. Huge thanks mate, I really appreciate it, it is a great idea. And in about a second I'm about to show you the Authority Solidus VS8100 plugin. It's a digital simulation of the Marshall 8100, so the legendary yet a little bit infamous kind of amplifier responsible for the majority of tones from the early 90s and we are about to see if this particular plugin is sharing the same DNA as the original Marshall Valve State. Just before we start, if you are here for the first time, my name is Lucas and if you are into the metal guitar playing, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button right now. In the next video I will be testing the Soldana SLO Mini, so expect that episode in the next Saturday and I hope to see you there. Thanks! At this place I would like to send huge thanks from Luca from Authority who provided me with the plugin for the demo purposes. Huge thanks mate. Even though I got it for free this video is not sponsored by enemies so I'm not getting paid to do this video, to do this work. So all the opinions are still mine. Second thanks goes to the Mooner Audio who provided me with the Trash Metal Groove Pack for my drums, for my Get Good drums. It really improved the speed of creating this video, so huge thanks guys. If you are looking for some kind of unique libraries for the Get Good drums for the Slate, for I don't know, Toon Track Easy Drummer, stuff like that, the link is in the description. Alright, so the Authority Solidus VS 8100 is a simulation, the digital recreation of the legendary and a little bit infamous Marshall Valve State 8100, so the same name. If I'm not mistaken here, this particular amplifier was the very first Valve State type of amplifier. The unique thing about it was that it was the solid amplifier, but with the additional twist, it is equipped with the 12AX7 tube on the preamp section just to drive the distorted channel. The Valve State technique was to put the single 12AX7 tube on the preamp section of the amplifier while retaining the solid state technology, which was a little bit cheaper than the regular tube amplifiers. So we got two channels, the normal and the boost one. The first one is fully solid state and the crunch switch introduces the diode overdriven in the second operational uh, amplifier stage. And on the boost channel we also got the solid state construction but followed by an additional 12AX7 preamp tube driving the tone stack. It was pretty much groundbreaking innovation uh, for other manufacturers on the market and this technique is still uh, used by a lot of other manufacturers up to this day. Let's jump into the project of the demo song that you just heard. Let's go! Okay, I must say I really missed that type of playing, you know, because I'm doing a lot of feebly-weebly kind of guitar playing over my channel, so I originated from this kind of playing, so it was a really nice uh, change over my YouTube channel. Alright, let's discuss it, what's going on over here. Uh, we got the GGD drums, uh, which I find uh, really useful for that type of playing. This is one of the most advanced kits, I believe, from the GGD and it's, you know, it's really sounding great. For the guitars, I only and exclusively used the Solidus VS8100. As you can see, I used the Kranzenstein uh, preset, so nothing was tweaked by me. Uh, this is the fully left track, this is fully panned to the right track over here, so you know, the same sound. And as an addition, the third track is on the center and it's backed up with the volume and I use the Holy Battle preset also from the, you know, let's say, original 
preset library from the SOLIDOS. This is how it sounds. It's a really harsh sounding type of um, type of gain, but all three of those are, you know, blend in kind of nicely. For the bass track, I use two separate sounds, and this is how it sounds. So this is the LTD Phoenix 104. Uh, so really cool bass with the EMG pickups, active electronics over here. So, you know, it's really crunchy and punchy. And I must say that, um, you know, this is a really specific type of uh, bass tone, which I find kind of, you know, suitable for this this type of song. There are two tracks. Uh, the first one is the Dark Glass Ultra. This is the heart of, the, of this sound. It, it sounds like this. And it's additionally boosted with the second track, which is backed up with the volume. And this is the Goblin by Aurora DSP. This is the free guitar plugin. Uh, actually, it's a recreation of the 5153. So I went for the really, let's say, harsh sounding, distorted sound over here. And to get this tone, I uh, cut the bass frequency with the inf EQ by slate, slate. So as you can see, this is the pretty much f***ed up EQing over here, but it's kind of blend in nicely with this first one. And of course, at the bus track, I got the compressor from the Teletronics. This is the universal audio plugin, just to, you know, control this everything a bit, but nothing really fancy because I'm, no, I'm not an audio engineer professional. So if it sounds for me, then I'm leaving it that way and I'm not, you know, tweaking anymore. If you are a long time subscriber of my channel, you probably already figured it out that I'm all about the really simple solution, the really simple signal chains. So the only thing that, let's say, advanced a bit in my projects are drums, but everything else I'd rather keep really simple because I really believe in simplicity when it comes to the metal rock music and, you know, overcomplicating it with the tons of plugins it doesn't really make sense for me. So I'm not a professional audio engineer, so probably someone who knows their craft would get 10,000 better, let's say, results over this. But for me, for the YouTube content, for, you know, let's say my own use, I'm perfectly happy with that. And as you can see, I used only Solidus amplifier. All right, guys, so let's take a quick glance at the Authority Solidus plugin, the user interface and how it looks, how it works and stuff like that. Of course, you got the separated standalone version, so you don't really need to uh, start up your DAW if you want to play with it. Let's take a look. The first impression is that, you know, it's really heartwarming because it gives you a feeling that you are actually sitting in front of the real Marshall 8100. So it's kind of nice. This is the kind of familiar uh, look because, you know, the only thing that it differs from the original Marshall is the, the logo of the Audiority instead of Marshall, right? At the bottom of the plugin, you may see the different components of the plugin signal chain. So you can quickly jump into the separated, let's say, tab representing different kind of component in the signal just by clicking it uh, with the left click of your, of your mouse by right clicking you are engaging or disengaging this particular, let's say, tab. At the far left, you got the input signal. This is pretty obvious. At the far right, you got the output signal. So we can manipulate the, let's say, the level of the signal before it hits the signal chain of the Audiority Solidus and after being treated by all the separated tabs, all the separated components. Right now, I'm reviewing the version 1.3, which was released in the December of 2023. So this is you know, in a constant development since 2020, I believe. So it's not like Audiority just released it and forget about it. It's constantly developed. So I'm really happy to, to see it, all the changes. You know, it, it really deserves some, uh, some gratitude because, you know, it is, there's a lot of work actually done over here. Starting from the left, we got the noise gate, which is really simple yet very effective. Uh, with one simple knob to adjust the trigger level. So the threshold of the gate, the sensitivity, and over there at the top of the pedal, you got this uh, three-way switch. And this is really useful if you want to get this noise gate to be dependent on the frequency you're tra trying to get rid of. The hiss mode allows you to, let's say, cut off the high frequencies. The mid setting is to get rid of the majority of noise coming from the distorted, let's say, high gain sound. 
and the full if you want to operate even harder. OD is an overdrive which is simulated uh, after the precision drive level, brightness and drive. This is really simple. The only thing that is, uh, let's say, characteristic for the precision drive for the original pedal which is simulated over here is the attack knob. This one is responsible for the, let's say, proper bass response uh, of, the, of the drive. Let's try that out. The third and the really useful tab is over here. This is the EQ boost. This is the stuff that is before the amplifier. So you can reshape the sound of your guitar before it hits the amplifier itself. And we got a simple yet really effective kind of EQing over here and pedal with the boost. This comes with the factory presets. So as you can see, we can change it, you know, and get inspired, let's say, to to create something different using the presets which are on board. This is kind of great because, you know, if you're not an audio engineer of your, let's say, less experience in creating tones, presets are always handy. <laughs> If you know the Marshall 8100, you know that it's a two wall channel amplifier, the normal channel, which is kind of clean and crunch switchable with the switch. And the second one, the main heart and the boost channel with the 12AX7 tube on the preamp and the operational amps over there with two different types of overdrive, the OD1 and OD2. Everything here is pretty, let's say simple. The only thing that is the key to the sound of the Marshall 8100 is the contour knob and I believe that everyone who used the Marshall 8100 uh, before knows that this knob is actually responsible for like 90% of tone shaping. Let's try that out. <laughs> The next step is the out EQ. This is a simple uh, equalizer after, which is after the amplifier itself. And it also comes with the presets as you can see all over here. Let's try that out. And lastly, we got the cap section. This is the cap IR loader. Uh, so, you know, there is no fancy type of microphone positioning, you know, the angles and stuff like that. No, this is a, let's say, more simple solution. We got the files with the impulse responses, but it doesn't mean that it's not, uh, let's say, advanced. Uh, we also got the cap rest frequency, the air frequency available to be adjusted, the air amount. We can blend those two separated cabinets with each other. One of the greatest things about this plugin is that it comes with a tons of presets. You can see there are factory presets inspired by Metallica sound, by Dimebag Darrell. I will be showing those presets in a second. So let's loop one riff and I will be switching the presets which are on board. I hope you will not be bored to death with this. Let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so the time for the final conclusion. When I was suggested by one of my subscribers to try that one out in my next video, I immediately launched the Audiority uh, website to see if there is some sort of demo and you know trial version to try out before I make a decision. Luckily, there was a fully functional demo and after five minutes of you know nonsense chugging, I decided that this is it, this is really original. I want to make a demo uh, for my channel to you know, share this content with you. This is the type of sound that I'm currently missing, the type of sound which I grew up while listening to the music in my childhood and since every f***ing company is now doing a copies of a 5150 amplifier, I really preferred to do something like this because I believe that this is something really legendary and it's not really that obvious choice of the amplifier to be encapsulated in the plugin form. Sound-wise, it definitely shares the DNA of the original Marshall 8100, no doubt about that. I don't want to get into the discussion if this is the one-to-one -one perfect copy. For me, that is the unique tone, the unique, let's say, gain characteristics. When it comes to the development, I got a little bit mixed feelings as I'm missing two things, actually maybe three things. That is the tuner and the stereo mode, and tuner is especially needed when you're using the plugin in a standalone version and you have no option to get the VST third-party plugin tuner, you don't know, like you could do it in the DAW project. And the stereo mode would really help to craft the tones for the double or quad-tracked guitars in the DAW way easier and, you know, use a little less CPU. Maybe I'm a little bit spoiled, but all those new uh, plugins which are on the market currently are you know, they are not missing those features and I'm, I get used to the comfort of getting the tuner and the stereo mode like in every new plugin. It's kind of funny, but I pointed exactly the same drawbacks with the ML Plexi demo from the ML Sound Lab, which you may watch over here. This is not like, this is the only plugin missing those features actually. The another drawback for me is the lack of a simple delay and I mean like really simple, like you know, just to check something out. I would definitely trade one of the EQ for a simple, let's say, chorus reverb or, or a delay, of course. I know that in the majority of cases, uh, we end up using the third-party plugins for the delays and reverbs, but I'm thinking now from the perspective of the standalone version of the standalone user. On the other hand, Solidus got a lot of amazing options, which I'm not seeing frequently, even the high-end and really expensive plugins like this pre-EQ, uh, the separate post EQ with the dedicated presets, which is pretty unique. We got a tons of onboard presets for the amplifier. We got an amazingly and yet simple impulse response section with a great editing variables like the resonant frequency adjustment, the cabinet air frequency, the panning and blending of the cap. We got the noise gate operating in three modes, uh, depending on your needs, and it's all wrapped up in a really simple yet modern uh, graphical interface. You even got this fancy randomizer button which can create a random type of presets and get you an idea for a unique sound. So is it worth 60 euro? Definitely, I have no doubt about that. Frankly speaking, it could be uh, priced even higher because it encapsulated the really legendary tone which was you know, abandoned by other plugin developers. I'm deeply in love with this plugin and I know that I will be using this a lot as I believe that it will greatly blend with other tube amp plugins. The tube amps are great, but for my taste, they all miss this, let's say, aggressive harshness of the solid state amplifier, if you know what I mean. I'm combining this uh, with the tube amplifier will create a great sound, I'm, I'm really sure about that. I believe that Decapitated is one of those bands, that, that, those modern bands that are uh, blending the sound of the real tube amplifiers with the solid state amplifiers, just to get this additional punch in the aggressive frequencies. I'm extremely happy to add this plugin to my collection and I can definitely recommend you to try it out. There's a trial version available at the Audiority website so you can try it by yourself. For all of you who loves an unusual methods of tone shaping, it's definitely way to go. This is not another 5150 plugin. This is not another Mesa plugin. This is the Marshall Valstate 8100. So, you know, it's a pretty unique amplifier. That's about it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support my work, all the affiliate links are in the description below. So if you're looking for the discount for the Bogren Digital, for the Aurora DSP, for the Guitar Pro software, it's all over there. I also encourage you to try the Munro Audio Drum Packs. So if you're a content creator, if you're a guitarist and you're looking for, let's say, the drum fields, the drum grooves, 
uh, you might check the Moonra Audio website. The prices for those particular drum packs are, let's say, pretty reasonable. And you know, I'm not getting paid for this, let's say, advertisement. So this is like a friendly uh, reference because they provided me with the uh, free pack for this video. Anyways, if you want to support me, hit that subscribe button, leave the thumb up, leave the comment, and see you in the next video where we will be testing the Soldano SLO Mini. So we will about to see if this is a Soldano or a Fartano. Anyways, see you in the next video.